Hey, new people. So with the 1.5 patch, there's a whole lot of new things to get used to. A ton of much needed changes were implemented after what most of us would consider a pretty rough patch in the history of this game. But there are some old quirks of the game's mechanics that are still true, which I'd like to bring up here. What some of you might not know about is an issue concerning input buffering between guard switches. I'll be providing an annotation you can click on so you can go straight to the video, explaining this much better than I can. But essentially, if you try to switch your guard and you see it either skips or gets delayed, you might be flooding your input queue. Meaning, if you press the button for your action a few too many times, it might not register properly. And that can do one of two things. It can cause a delay in your switch, or it'll skip it entirely. This problem occurs with the Lawbringer, Nobushi, Raider, and Shigoki heroes. All other heroes are fine, and are able to panic switch, or just rotate directions as fast as they want. The important thing mentioned here is if you play any of those classes, you need to keep in mind to avoid spamming or panicking when you're switching guards, or else you risk skipping it or delaying it. If you ever wondered why you were slower to block on a Lawbringer, Shigoki, Raider, or Nabushi, this might have been what stopped you. In any case, on top of the many problems with the game, this presents an issue with the core gameplay of these heroes and needs to be fixed. Until then, like I said, if you don't panic or spam switch, then you're safe. The gameplay of For Honor isn't inherently twitchy anyway. Players should be trying to slow it down and be more methodical about how they're playing. They never meant for this to be Street Fighter V or Tekken. They wanted For Honor to be a slowed down version of those games. They've mentioned in the past they wanted to focus on the group game modes, which means this game is mainly supposed to be teamwork strategy oriented, with a hint of reflexes and mind games. But the problem does need to be fixed. I don't think they intended for those heroes to have such a buggy disadvantage. There's also a second video that I'll also be linking to, exposing some information on blocking and pairing assassin classes. There are a lot of complaints still fuming on all forums on how it's too difficult to block or parry their light attacks. I've mentioned this in a previous video. While on console this is mostly true, on PC it's actually possible to consistently parry a light attack. So, a peacekeeper's attack comes in at 400 ms, factoring in the average reaction time of 280 ms and how stand switching takes 100, you basically have 20 ms room for error. It's large enough for the average player but only on PC, since on consoles, you need to consider that their network latency will take away that margin of error. This is all in the description of the linked video. It kind of builds a case for the console and PC versions to have different patches knowing this information, especially since that still doesn't factor in frame rate. As for PC, I do think the average reaction time still doesn't consider a few things. First thing is your hardware. It can depend on what monitor you use, and if you're using KBM instead of a controller. It can depend on how good your mouse and keyboard is. You could be adding a delay as high as 100 ms. The second thing to consider is if someone's distracted by multiple enemies, or is nervous or panicking. It's not a very good excuse, but those reaction averages are taken in a controlled setting where you know what you're going for and what you're doing, and we don't know exactly how they collect that kind of data online or how accurate it can be, especially if you take in how competitive the human benchmark can get. Like I said though, there are flimsy excuses at best. Fighting game communities have been dealing with smaller reaction windows for decades, and some of them use the same controllers we use in For Honor, even at competitive levels. PKs have this huge stigma against them, so I wouldn't be surprised if players are pushed by anger and panic so hard that they find themselves unable to block or parry them. That definitely doesn't mean they need to be nerfed though. It means this kind of information needs to be spread around in order to calm those prejudices. Ultimately, I think this boils down to which sort of player Ubisoft wants to cater to. With a game like this, you do want to cater to both the casual player and the competitive player. But in some cases, the way a game is designed will force you to choose one over the other. Ubisoft has to decide which player is more important to their plans for this game. And no, I'm not admonishing either side in any way. I guess if I had to explain my position on this casual versus hardcore debate, I'd say I play like a casual, but I think competitively. So you could say I see both sides of the argument. Anyway, thank you to Big Hat Logan for their testing and information on this. Be sure to watch those videos if you want more details. This has been another Facts on For Honor video. 
Besides the fact that I'm boring on turning into a spreadsheets channel, I do plan on releasing a video on honor codes and for honor, so there's that coming. It's only been a few videos and I'm already getting tired of repeating this shit. Maybe we can make this a blanket statement extending to all videos? No? Okay. If you liked it, like it. If you want to sub, please sub. Joking aside, thanks for the likes and comments. I really appreciate the feedback I've gotten so far and I'm working to improve my videos. Thanks for watching.